Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, hockey fans of all ages, this is AZ AF Arena, home of your Brockton Boxers, and today is the day millions around the world have waited for for the last 364 days. Is it the fact that the Mansfield Hornets come to town to face your Brockton Boxers in the final game of the regular season? No. Is it the fact that the MIAA basketball brackets come out today? No. It is the one, the only, Mike the Postman Simmons' birthday today. So we're all celebrating. What are we celebrating, Matt? I'm sorry, I got here Mike, a little late. Mike the Postman Simmons' birthday is today. What a great way to spend the birthday afternoon on a great early spring sneak peek. 75 degrees outside. Was it off? really? Yeah, it pained me to put on a winter jacket and come into the igloo. But what a great way to end the week as we get ready for tournament time for boys and girls basketball and hockey. We should have something probably by tomorrow morning about where our very own Brockton boxes will be probably on One would hope. Tuesday or Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe even Monday. Well, the basketball bracket's coming out today and the BCA team is gonna take a trip down 95 Couple days in a row. Couple days in a row. We're at if Durfee and Fall River may, on Monday. Maybe Jay will put you up in um, in Foxborough. <laughs> maybe that that <laughs> would be nice. Well, the Mansfield Hornets come in wearing their away all green jerseys, white trim. The Hornets, the Boxers, as per the norm, are wearing their home whites, black and red trim, big boxer head on the stomach. As always, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, Kevin Cairo, in a very interesting day in the Brockton High <laughs> Athletics world. Yeah. So. Never a dull moment. Um, just got some clarification on why our boys would be traveling down to Durfee. Sylvia off the post. Oh. And the goaltender, Tony Rulo, forced to cover up as the puck slid back between his legs in front of him. So, for those of you who haven't been scouring the MIAA's website and Twitter all morning, like the two of us have, the Brockton High Lady Boxers basketball team will be playing at Attleboro High School Tuesday night. Tuesday night at 6 o'clock. And then the boys, which I just got off the phone with the, the tournament crazy, director, the crazy thing. is that we will travel down to Durfee to play at Durfee versus Durfee, even though we, we beat the them division. twice. We won the division. We, we beat them twice. The but the explanation to me was that there was a three-way tie with um, Wellesley, Durfee, and us. We all came in at 10 and 10. So names went into a hat, and mm, we didn't get picked. So, hey, they have to win either. It's at home or on the road. In order to continue on, you have to win. So you can't worry about what gym it is. Hoops the same size, courts the same size. They have to bring their game. Oh, but I guarantee it, it could be crazy down there. It could. There's no it love lost. Been. There oh, is yeah. no love lost between Durfee and Brockton. I have found out that's probably our biggest rival in all sports. Well, BCA Sports will be on the road with the boxers as they start their postseason runs. Pray for us, because it could be a very long week. Is the Southeastern uh, hockey team, which we're also going to be covering, going in undefeated. Really? 16-0-2 at last count. Oh, they've, they've boy. They've games since then. Stagno and Pat oh, saved down, and, and the somebody net. And the net has come loose. Ref's not too worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a clear three inches. Now he's going to skate over and no, try to fix it while the action's all the way down yeah. the ice. All right, there we go. What would happen if there was like a 200-foot shot while Stagnone was looking the other way? <laughs> Good move by oh, number nine, move. Chris Jenkins, yeah. the freshman forward. A very freshman-heavy team, this Mansfield Hornets. Eight freshmen. On the roster. Not really. That's. I think that's what we're, we're going to look like next year. Not necessarily a bad thing. You get a no, couple it's not. Of seasons of experience in there. 
There's a lot of sophomores on the boxers that will mm -hmm. have some valuable postseason experience after this year. 11-10 left to go in the first period, still scoreless. You gotta see if Nathan Petty can step up next year as a goaltender because filling the shoes of um, one back there is gonna be tough to do. Adam Stagnone, a very admirable job in his senior season, of course, following in the footsteps of Franco Massaro. Kirkshank not getting all of the shot. Picked up by a Hornet in front. Now number 10 launching a wrist shot. Oh. Glove saved by Stag, and, and he holds on the for the faceoff. That was through a screen, too. It was a nice job staying with the puck, following all the way into the glove. A little bit different um, tempo that we're seeing here the, oh, since the last 48 hours we were in the rink watching that Walpole team. Spring has sprung in Brockton. Of course, 75 degrees outside. Yeah, but don't so. get too used to it. Zach Sylvia up skating almost as a forward for the boxers. Now behind the Mansfield goaltender. Out to the blue line for Marissa Massaro. Her and Sylvia switch places. And Mansfield able to take it. Sylvia gets it right back. Brings it around the boards. He had Peter Sylvia out in front. Elected to hold the puck and Mansfield able to clear out of the zone. So a day like today is so cruel in a lot of ways because you think that spring's right around the corner and then March comes in. I always think that March is the cruelest month here in New England because you, See, get, a you, you, say February. you get a little taste of spring in February and you think that winter's done and then March rolls around and it rears its ugly head. And I remember days of coaching over in the high school and it'd be parking lot practice for the first week, tryouts because there was the fields were either muddy or covered in snow. March is the greatest month, however. Why is your birthday somewhere in there? My, my birthday is <laughs> somewhere in there. Yeah. Nine fifteen to go in the first period. Brockton, the majority of the offensive zone time thus far. Brendan oh, Thermo look takes out. a huge hit up high. The arms stay down. That was a little close to the head, I thought. Forearm I shiver agree. under the chin. That was football. I think it would have been 15 for hands to the face. Unnecessary roughness. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Justin Crookshank off the boards. Oh, wrap around. One's popping up a little Ooh. bit and it squirts out the other end of the crease. Number two picking up. Joe Ol Ol Olson Ooh, now in the one slot. One-timer. One-timer in the high slot. The freshman Jenkins couldn't get a clean shot off. And Brockton able to recover and Anthony Paul dumps it into the Hornets zone. Just out of curiosity, I've asked every other person that I've called a Mansfield game with this exact question. We have a semi-break, oh, break. number 18, oh. edged off the puck. Stagno pushed into his net, no penalty. And I think the net is loose again. It wouldn't surprise <laughs> me. Frank Atten able to recover the puck. Crookshank out into the neutral zone. So back, back to the Mad Dog trivia question of the day. Uh-huh. When's the last time you saw a green hornet? Um, in the movies. Oh, what a save by Stag on the rebound. Jenkins couldn't put it in. All right. Zach Sylvia now up for Anthony Paul. Paul takes the hit to move the puck. 7.20 left to go in the first period. Still scoreless. Mansfield picking it up just a little bit. Turnover onto the stick of Al Birmingham. Now Zach Sylvia behind, behind Adam Stagnone. Frank Atten, backhanding it off the boards. Uh, Sylvia, rather, forced to recover. 
Sylvia strong on his skates, able to carry the puck a few feet towards the Hornets zone. Now backhanding it in was Jalen Bridges. And Brockton will change out. A shot off the shoulder of Rulo. All the way around the boards, taken there by number six, Chad Piotti. Nick Levine chasing this one down. Off the glass and doubt possible two on one. Now it's a three on two, a shot. It pops over Stag and it's in. A goal for the Mansfield Hornets, number three, Adam Anastos, the junior forward, putting this one off the goaltender, popped above. Adam Stagnone's head and found the back of the net. 1-0 Mansfield with 6-11 to go in the first period. Marissa Massaro winning the faceoff, putting the hit on Anastos. Jaden Menzer, the senior forward, credited with that goal, assisted by Tim Arnold. Nastos was in the general area. 5.45 left to go in the first period. Brockton once again, as has been the case much of the season, fighting from behind. Peter Sylvia high off the glass trying to spring Crookshank, who's a few steps behind it. Mansfield able to clear it out. Peyton Sylvia, D to D to Crookshank. Crookshank throwing a 75 foot shot on Rulo and he covers up for the faceoff. 508 left to go in the first period. One to nothing, the Hornets on top of Brockton. Courtesy of Jaden Menzer. Losing his footing was Frank Atten, and now a two-on-one broken up by Louis Goyette. Now Zach Sylvia poking it up for Frank Atten. Three-on-one up ice for the boxers. Brandon Palermo with a shot saved by Rulo. Gets his own rebound, trying to send it back into the slot. Unsuccessful, and Rulo covers up for the faceoff. If you are just joining us, this is the final regular season game for both the Hornets and the Boxers. The MIAA playoff brackets come out sometime tomorrow, hopefully. Basketball brackets coming out shortly before this game. And when I say shortly, it was somewhere in the middle of the national anthem. God love the MIAA. The Rockton Lady Boxers once again will be traveling down 95 as an icing is called against the Hornets. They will play at Attleboro High School on Tuesday night. The Rockton High Boys basketball team will be at Durfee High School in Fall River. That game is on Monday night. Check our Twitter feed. We are at the Brockton channel. All one word. For the full brackets, any conversation you might have on how unfair it is that we beat Durfee two times this year and they still have a home game against us in the MIAA playoffs. The hockey brackets, again, coming out tomorrow. Stagnone diving on this save. We'll be posting those as well. Widely expected Brockton will be down in Bourne, hopefully Wednesday night. Jalen Bridges winning the faceoff to Justin Crookshank. Four minutes to go in the first period. Again, 1-0 Mansfield. Jaden Menzer with the lone marker. It's Peyton Sylvia trying to clear. He does, but not out. Now a shot by Cohen Anastasia. It's off the stick of Stagnone. Now Frank Atten able to gain possession, clearing it, but not out. 
And Mansfield with some extended zone time pressure here. Anastasia forward to the goal line, squirting loose. Picked up by number 18, James, James Bazou. Kirkshank coming up with a block off the right leg. Bridges up for Anthony Paul. Paul poking it to himself, doesn't know where it is. It was under his skates. And Mansfield able to recover with 3.05 to go. A blocker saved by Rulo off the shot from the neutral zone. Icing waved off as Patrick McCafferty unable to handle the Hail Mary pass. And Marissa Massaro taking it. She gets an elbow up high. The arms stay down. Massaro's been the Iron Man for the boxers the last really four games, taking a couple of huge hits, blocking six shots against Walpole. Off glass and able to keep it in where the Hornets, 2.15 to go in the first period. Now Birmingham now behind Adam Stagnone off the boards looking for Bridges, doesn't connect. Kirkshank takes the hit to move the puck looking for Nathan L. Shami. It bounces up into the neutral zone. This one's sent high and ping-ponging in. It's picked up by Zach Sylvia, 145 to go. Sylvia turning on the Jets, gets past a couple of Hornets, has to recover. He doubles back into the Brockton zone. Now Al Birmingham. Birmingham takes the hit onto the bench. A Brockton clean entry into the zone. Peter Sylvia shot, stick save Rulo. Gets his own rebound and now has it on the half boards on the far side. Shot negated by the stick of Matt Farragher, senior captain. Now Farragher in looking for the chip in. It's broken up by Zach Sylvia. Now three on two for the boxers. Shot zinging wide. Rulo picks this one up. Holds on for the faceoff. 58.2 seconds to go in the first period. Again, the Hornets on top, one to nothing on the final game of the regular season. Brockton winning yet another faceoff. Shot pad saved by Rulo. Mansfield gathering up the rebound. This is Farragher. Farragher letting it slide over to Chris Jenkins. Now Jenkins on the far boards, 30 seconds to go. Shot hits a couple bodies out front, goes to the half boards. Bridges takes the hit. Sylvia able to gather possession. He set, tried to send it out, but Mansfield blocked. Now number eight, skate to stick over to Jenkins. Jenkins with a shot, and this one off of the arm of Sylvia into the end boards. Now wraparound attempt. Stagnone covering a shoving match ensues. Crookshank lays out Jenkins. Cooler heads prevail, and with 1.2 seconds on the clock, we will have a face-off. Empty net for the Hornets. There's not enough time for the boxers to create a rush. Stagnone with the last second pad save and able to cover up an interesting first period in which the Mansfield Hornets scored a fluky goal. And one nothing the score at the end of the first period. Mansfield, a fluky goal that came from a terrible angle down below the faceoff dots. And that's where we stand after one. We go and head into the first intermission. One to nothing, the Mansfield Hornets on top of the Brockton Boxers. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you second period action right after this. 
Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. That's a major key. Another one. Another. More will talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused. Fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise. Louise. Can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. Coach, 1-0 after one kind of a fluky goal. Tell us what you saw. Yeah, it was kind of a weird angle. I don't know if it went off his glove. Uh, but uh, I thought the D was in good position. Uh, just one of those one we got to get back for him. Pretty evenly matched in the first period. What's the strategy to kind of accelerate in the second? Uh, same story it has been. More pucks to the net, getting the rebounds. We're not getting the secondary uh, chances. Coach, good luck in the second. Thank you. Hey, Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. Okay, I'm on my way. Hey, guys, what are you doing? We're going swimming. We're going biking. Yeah. I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi, babe. How was school today? Hi, Dad. It was great. Okay, honey, I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in, because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, <laughs> hockey fans of all ages, welcome back into AZ Af Arena for second period action between the Mansfield Hornets and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside Kevin Caro here at ACF for the final regular oh. season game for the, both the Brockton Boxers and the Mansfield Hornets. The score is one to nothing. Mansfield on top due to a fluky goal. That goal courtesy of Jaden Menzer, assist to Tim Arnold. But other than that, pretty evenly matched. Yeah, that goal was more like a, a wild pitch that got away from the catcher. Well, we talked to Coach Chris Cunningham in between periods, and the story much of the same. More pucks to the net. Chase the second opportunities. Sharpen your skates because, as we all know, it is a sheet of ice out there. Score yeah, the more goals than the other team. Constant forechecking. Yeah, they didn't really have that many shots on net in the first period. I think they had more shots against Walpole than they did. That sounds about right. Walpole, of course, finishing their season 21-0-1. Oh, just missed it. As we were constantly checking the Herald today to try to get the basketball pairings came across the Super 8 and what, Super what eight it for will hockey? look like for hockey. Do they have it posted yet? They do not. But Walpole <laughs> is on the fence. They're the last team like the others are all locked and then they go in between two or three teams for the last spot. Walpole might not get in because of strength of schedule. Yep. Yeah, and the thing that was confusing for me, I mean, this is the first time that I've had to enter teams into the tournament and things of that nature. And I got an email the other night from the MIA saying that, hey, you don't have your roster in, you don't have your, um, your entry in. Our last game is today. And this is the cutoff date, but yet they have you. So a lot of teams who didn't, who haven't finished and submitted, that could all change as far as overall record goes. So I, right. I was... And as we're seeing with basketball, one game could make the difference. Yeah. And in this case, it won't make a difference for us because we won the league championship. We we're automatically qualified. But there are teams out there with this is the last day and a win could get them in. So I just don't, I don't see how it is to anybody's advantage to get those in early. 
that lovely organization no. headquartered and, and, in and I'm not, trust me, I'm not questioning what they do. I just don't, if they make the pairings based on information that isn't really updated until the end of the day today, then they'll, it's just more work on their end. Right. 11.52 left to go in the second period. Mansfield hanging on to that one goal lead. Already with some offensive zone time now. Oh. A blocker saved by Adam Stagnon off the stick of Patrick McCafferty, the junior forward. Brock able to clear out. Yeah, what I'm hoping is after this hockey season that um, I see a lot of these kids playing some sort of spring sport, either baseball or lacrosse. I think that'll be, you know, just a natural fit. Either one of those sports would be good. I was talking with Maddie Campbell at one of the basketball games. Zach Sylvia. He's got the trifecta going. Football, hockey, and baseball. Good. Well, I mean, I think that the, the three-sport athlete, I mean, they're, they're few and far between because there's so many kids that play year-round in one sport and AAU and travel team and Research is now showing that kids that don't take time off are more susceptible to injuries because they, they, their body never gets to rest. The, the conversation I always have is the two sport athletes, we see a lot of football, basketball, mm -hmm. or a lot of football, baseball. It's a complete different set of muscles being yeah. used for one sport yep. than the other. A shot oh, off the post. Off the post. Stagnone can't recover. It's oh. loose in a goal for Mansfield. Yeah, that, did, that didn't two, look good. Joe Olsen skating through the slot, finding the garbage out in front. And Stagnone, I think he was trying to pick up his stick. He had trouble getting back on his feet. 2-0 Hornets. With 10.18 to go in the second. We wait the official word on scoring. A rare sight. <laughs> Coach Chris Cunningham has come up off the bench to utilize the virtual ice rink. And he's a little coaching that's what up I think Ben Martin. That's what you need. They have a little diagram so people at home can see. You get, can get you can break down the illustrator. <laughs> yeah, and it would be good for every party involved. Yeah, for all sports, you can break down all the plays. All right, Jay, if you if you're listening, Matt, Matt wants a illustrator. I had a illustrator for uh, Thanksgiving Day football in Bridgewater Random. That was that was a fun one. Yeah. Jack Sylvia shot this one. Got to put those on net. You have to put the shots on that. Three or four feet wide. It's close, but it's not going to get anything done. Kirkshank giving it back to Sylvia. Sylvia bobbing and weaving through the neutral zone, trying to backhand it into the Mansfield zone. Ultimately gets it in, but with some trouble. And Adam Anastos putting it in. Right back into the box of defensive zone. Now three on two up ice. Got to get a shot off here. Frank Atten unable to get the shot off. It trickles towards net. Saved by Rulo. Got to put a shot on net here. Into the slot. Oh. Paul with a shot. And that one went right through the and crease. They need, they need a goal. They need a goal. They need to get a little mojo. little momentum shift. It, it's been a while since they've put one in between last game and this game and last goal coming the second period against on Natick. Day against Natick. Yeah. But don't feel bad because only eleven people have scored on the Walpole <laughs> goaltender all year. And three of them were from Norwell, yeah. so really only eight goals. And they might not make the Super 8. Shot, stick saved by Stag to the half boards. Yeah, sliding across and putting his blocker on it. Spin around shot right through the crease. 
Austin Ricker, the sophomore defenseman. And it's taken by El Shami. He backhands it right to Tim Arnold. Arnold assisting on the first Mansfield goal. And Stagnone diving on this one and holding on for the faceoff with 7.51 to go. But I would say that pound for pound, an overall team game, Walpole is by far head and shoulders above anybody that came into this ranks to play us. I, honestly, I think they were better than Zavarian, Natick. They were better than any of the teams that came in here. And for them not to get a seat, I would be really surprised if they didn't get in to the Super 8. Of course, the Super 8, one of the hot topics, whether they should have it for every sport in postseason play. Personally, I think they should, especially for football. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to do... The whole football thing, it's, it's so complicated and everybody has an opinion about it and every... It's just no matter what you do, you, you're not going to keep everybody happy. I just think that that's just the nature of football at all levels. I mean, in the NFL, they think there should be more playoff teams. In college, you only have the top four. So no one is going to be ever truly satisfied. Um, but me personally, I'm not a big fan of the playoff format. The one, the, the one that's currently that we have... Um, and I know I'm new to this, but I am not a not a huge fan in the early stages. Another goal for the Hornets, number 18, right out in front. James Bazoo, the freshman forward. And he has his third goal of the year. I what do you do in this situation? Do you call a timeout? Do you swap goaltenders? Do you... You're down 3-0 to a to a team that supposedly we're going to be evenly matched with. And yeah, they play, they're very flat today. There's, I mean, this very flat boxer team. I mean, we've heard the the old age old adage that last game of the regular season we've already clinched our yep. playoff berth. Yep, there's a little bit of a letdown. Take it easy. Oh, look out! Big. <laughs> Big open ice Hello. hit on Andrew Petty. And he's still trying to shake out the cobwebs. Yeah, I think he got the wind knocked out of him. What the heck is going on down there in the defensive zone? Not much defensively, or so it would seem. On well, the top line of Paul Bridges and Atten on the ice, Petty. Very gingerly heading over to the bench. Yeah. He got lit up pretty good. Clean hit. Five forty-five left to go. Stick saved by Stagnone. Yeah, they, they need to do something here. Atten trying a long lead pass intended for a breaking Anthony Paul. Up. Oh. Sniper. What happened? Oh, Tony Rulo <laughs> was headed to the bench for the extra skaters. The boxers will go a man down. And it looks like Rulo he, he literally tripped over the the circle. Are you <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about forgetting to sharpen your skates. Oh boy! Didn't listen to good old Derek Sanderson. I just hope the rest of the Mansfield team saw that. Oh, that was like somebody from the stands had a bow and arrow and just took out one leg. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong, but the penalty is to Zach Sylvia. A minute and 30 second minor penalty. And Tripping. the word I, I heard ribbing. Ribbing? Oh, I, I saw the... Tripping makes a lot more sense. Thirty seconds gone, oh, a shot, boy. and unable to get all of it was the Look senior out. captain Matthew Farragher. Brockton able to clear it all the way down the ice. 
taken by Tyler Oakley, yet another freshman. We're up to Farragher. <laughs> Farragher oh getting boy. around Anthony Paul. He's got Paul. some speed going, too. Bobbing and weaving wow. his shot. Blocker he saved by Stagnone. He went from post to post without anybody touching him. This one deflecting off of the stick of a diving Anthony Paul into the protective netting. 23 seconds left on Zach Sylvia's penalty. 421 left in the second period. Mansfield up three to nothing over the Brockton Boxers. Able to clear out into the neutral zone. Tim Arnold has it for the Hornets. Now four minutes to go. Sylvia's penalty is up, but he's still in the box. He just gave the Hornets an extra uh, 10, 15 seconds Catch of power play time. Maybe a like cat that. nap over in the in the box. 3.51 to go in the second period. 3 nothing Hornets, Zach Sylvia. Fresh off a, a minute and 42 second penalty for tripping. Hey, and the other thing that I, that I kind of forgot about, this has been vacation week. So for these kids, this is kind of out of their routine as far as going to school and what time they get up. And I'm sure a lot of them are going to bed later than they usually do. And waking up, so I mean, th that could explain a little bit of the sluggishness. You know, up late, up late watching Jimmy Kimmel and the Bruins have been on over on the West Coast, so those games have started late. I'm excited for this Dallas game, the Bruins and the Stars. Now is Tyler Sagan back, or is he done for the year? I think he's back now. One of the one of the Bens was is done for the year. It might be Jordy. Zach Sylvia into the midfield. Oh, oh Peter that was Sylvia a, that was launching a good, a shot. That was a good give and go. Ruo making what seems like his first save in yeah, the second period. I think he had more action going to the bench, <laughs> tripping and falling than he has. It's the most action he had in the period until that shot. Mansfield winning the faceoff. Jack Gormley, or rather Nick Levine, off the boards. Nastos into the Brockton zone. His shot and a save by Adam Stagnone. Two fifty-one to go in the second period. Brockton yet another defensive zone faceoff. Frank Atten with it off of the faceoff win into the Mansfield zone. Oh, Back hitting a, into the oh, slot, a shot, and it went nice just wide. It another one. Good offensive push by the boxers. Stick went flying, and the Deadwood picked up by number five, Jaden Menza, the first goal scorer. Do they even the make sticks out of wood anymore? Some of them. <laughs> it's rare. But I think I found some down in the storage closet that probably go back to, um, I think it's a Phil Esposito model. Nice. <laughs> so nice. The, yeah. There's five of them taped together that I found the behind old, a storage the old stand, closet. The Stan Makita? Yep. Without the bend. Without the, the bend. It was a blade. straight stick. And then it got stuck in the boards one day and kept wiggling it out, and now we have curved sticks. They're carbon fiber sticks. One of the favorite topics of everybody's favorite play-by-play -play announcer, Jack Edwards. They break a lot easier than the wood, but they're also a lot lighter. They're a lot lighter. Um, there's two theories on the lighter stick, just like a lighter bat and a lighter golf club and all that, that um, you can swing it faster. However, I've always been a big not fan much of more power. not much more power. So I always like to play with a little heavier bat and um, just generate more speed. I think that would be the same in hockey. 
Maybe it'll be a wooden wooden stick comeback. Wouldn't that be nice? Baseball went to aluminum for a while. Now they're back to wood. Mm -hmm. The net coming off its moorings. Big surprise <laughs> there. We should have an over and under for that every game. How many times we'll have to stop play? Right and now we're at three. Is, the thing is, but we didn't they stop fixed play the in the problem from last year. Last year, I don't know what happened, but the holes for the moorings got filled up with snow. And the moorings were sitting on the ice, and there was just a little <laughs> gap between the ice and the post of the net. And they would come off if somebody 200 feet down the ice sneezed. <laughs> Last year we also had five broken Zambonis. So. Atten back at oh. shot and it trickled an inch and a half wide. That would have been nice. 45 seconds to go and the Foxers. All right, maybe a little push. So many teams have done it to them in the last 30 seconds to score a goal. Maybe they can put one in. Well, little we, mojo. We did it against Norwood the last yeah, we 35 did. seconds. Atten scrapping down low. Backhanding it, looking for himself. Instead, finds number 18, James Bazoo. Fifteen seconds left. Maybe the boxers have one more rush. They send it all the way down the ice. Number 20, Cullen Murphy, senior captain. Unless Over somebody really Brian gets sloppy. I think we're going in three zip. The buzzer sounds in the second period has come to an end. The score, Mansfield 3, the Brockton Boxers 3 less than that. And Tony Rulo putting up a clean sheet on the Boxers. Mr. Caro, what do the Brockton Boxers need to do to clean up their first two periods and, and well, really take it to the Hornets in the I third? I think that they, like we've said, unfortunately, so many times this year, you have to win the last period of the game. And this is their last regular season before next week that they go to the tournament. And honestly, I think they're just a little more effort, a little more hustle. And um, no defensive breakdowns. I think that's really been the key. They've made a couple sloppy mistakes in the defensive end, and that's it. So clean it up, play hard, and, and win the last period. Well, 3-0 the score at the end of the second period. The Mansfield Hornets on top of the Brockton Boxers. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you third period action right after this. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another. More will talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused, fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise, Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at getschool.com. Coach, starting off the third period on a power play, a full minute and 30 seconds, what's the strategy on a clean shoot device? Uh, well, we've, uh, we haven't had much uh, opportunity in their zone, so uh, you know, we've got to get some shots, and uh, we've got to look for quality shots, can't get shots blocked, and we really got to work hard. Um, I feel like we've been outworked uh, the first few periods, uh, which I didn't like, and uh, so I let the guys know, hopefully we have a little jump here at the beginning. Two goals in the second for the Hornets. What was the message in between? Uh, the message is we're being outplayed. Um, Outmuscled, outworked. Uh, they're winning the one-on-one -on -one battles. And uh, we've got we've to make a comeback here one at a time. You can't get three at once, but uh, get one, ship away, get some adrenaline, and then go from there. Coach, good luck in the third. Thank you. Hey, Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. Okay, I'm on my way. Hey, guys, what are you doing? We're going I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi, babe. How was school today? Hi, Dad. It was great. Okay, honey. I'll be home soon. 
Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome back into AZ Arena for a third period action between the Brockton Boxers and the Mansfield Hornets. Brockton with a minute and 30 second power play to start off this third period. That penalty going against Austin Ricker for cross-checking. Short-handed opportunity for Farragher. His shot blocker saved by Stagnone. Into the protective netting. Now the first 30 seconds of the power play already gone. All right, I gotta put the code back on. <laughs> Once again, I'm Mad Dog Man Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, Mr. Kevin Caro. Mr. Caro. And this is uh, my last game, I think, with you. That's what you think. We'll see you down in Bourne. <laughs> I think this is my last game in the broadcast booth. Brockton starting off the third period with a full minute and 30 second power play. Half of which is now gone. 45 seconds left. Marissa Massaro with the puck. De facto D to D to Zach Sylvia. Adden can't corral the pass. Icing waved off. Brockton able to recover. Bridges off the skate of Sylvia in the neutral zone. Back ending it. Back deep in the Hornet zone. Ten seconds left on the powerless power play for the Boxers that started off decent enough. But as has been the case all game, Mansfield has recovered. And we're back to even strength. Frank Atten back ending oh, it in front. One -timer a one-timer for it. Bridges. Didn't connect a block shot off the stick of number 10, Cullen Anastasia. Brockton skating four forwards. And Zach Sylvia, the lone defenseman. Now Justin Crookshank joins Sylvia on the ice. It's filled up oh in a semi break. No. Now it's a 2 on 0. A shot and a goal for number 9. Chris Jenkins, the freshman forward, that is his eighth goal of the year. What or nothing, Hornets on top, 12.54 to go in the third period, and that is not what the boxers wanted nor needed to start off. No. What is hopefully a comeback effort. They just can't seem to get anything going offensively today. It's not like this Manfield team is um, that dominant. Walpole? <laughs> no, that. <laughs> Kirkshank for Goyette. Tie up on the boards. Yeah, I'm gonna chalk. I'm gonna chalk this one up to being out of their routine. And I want to see, you know, take a look at the schedule next year. I think we had some time earlier in the season, which we had one game in a week, and then we try to squeeze them all in at the end. Sylvia launching a shot, hitting a stanchion. Three minutes gone in the third period. Peyton Sylvia creating a turnover. Crookshank off the boards and it rings all the way around. Picked up by Chad Piotti, the senior forward for the Hornets. Sylvia backhanding it oh, off, off of the referee. The ref. Unfazed. He didn't budge. I think he took it off the noodle. Strong in the face of adversity is the zebra wearing razor blades. Crookshank Tapping it to Peter Sylvia. Sylvia launching it deep into the Hornets zone. Brockton sending out Atten, Paul, and Bridges. Goyette pushed down to the ice, but he got the shot off. The glove saved by Tony Rulo. 
Rulo, not bad numbers this year. 24 goals against. Good for a 209 goals against average. And a 910 save percentage. Of course, those aren't James Corcoran numbers, but still respectable. Oh, look out. Bridges taking a stick up high. We're going to have a penalty against the Mansfield Hornets. It's going to be a high stick against Jaden Menzer. Yep. He didn't, he didn't get tripped up over the circle over line. The, over the paint, yeah. So it's Menzer headed to the box a minute and 30 seconds for putting the blade of his stick into the mask of Jalen Bridges. Brockton, they need one here. Already a second gone off the power play that hasn't started yet. <laughs> 129 on the clock. Tech Sylvia poking it on to Anthony Paul. Let's see if they can just get something going offensively here. Zach Sylvie able to recover. His shot is deflected wide. Sylvia recovering at the blue line and the boxers forced to tag up. And an offsides ruled against Brockton. 55 to go. On the extra man for Brockton, 10.04 in the third period. Add in to take the face off, winning it to Jalen Bridges. Mansfield sending it all the way down. Zach Sylvia picking it up for the boxers. She's at and at and back to Sylvia. Up to Marissa Massaro. Mansfield calling for an offside, so they're not going to milk that call out of the officials. Massaro behind the net. They're losing it, picked up by Joe Olson. He clears it 200 feet down the ice. And registering a shorthanded shot, Farragher. Here's the 200-foot shot that you were talking about earlier while the ref was fixing the net. Yep, there it is. <laughs> Number 10 with an opportunity. Colin Anastasia didn't get all the shot. Adam Stack, known making a glove save and a power play defensive zone faceoff for the Brockton Boxers. There's only four boxers on the ice. Justin Kirkshake is the fifth. Massaro winning the faceoff back to the goaltender. Two seconds split off the clock and another faceoff. Let's see if we can make a push and get a shot on net would be nice. Zach Sylvia around the boards looking for Peter Sylvia. Now Nathan El Shamibi on Tony Rulo. And now a semi break for number five. Fresh out of the box, his shot deflected high and wide. Jaden Menzer on the latest Hornet opportunity. Oh, well, that was. <laughs> Marissa was lined up to get hit into the boards, and number 20 just kind of gave her a little bit. That's. Nice, nice show of sportsmanship right there. Because, I mean, he really could have taken her out. And we've seen that a couple times in the past few games where some kids have really... Made a good derpy. Yeah. Six block shots for Massaro against the Natick Redhawks. An admirable effort. It's Kirkshank tried the indirect self pass, now chasing it deep. Recovering back out of the neutral zone. Bridges to Peyton Sylvia. Sylvia losing it to Anastasia. Now Bridges over skating the puck. Backhanding it around. Picked up we've there. Got some, we've got a mouth cut on the... Here. Who lost the mouth cut? Right. Matt, did you lose your mouth cut set it out on the guys? Yes, yes. Through the protective netting. Ryan Corning with the latest. Oh, tell me he's not gonna tell me he's not gonna put that in. 
please don't. He's not going to put that in his mouth. I think he just did. It's clean ice. I'm going to get sick. Oh, we'll, we'll see him in the nurse's office on Monday for sure. Jerry! <laughs> Halfway through the third period, Mansfield up four to nothing on the Brockton Boxers. Zach Sylvia and Nathan L. Shami going back and forth. Peter Sylvia shot goes wide. And that was Nathan who picked up the <laughs> his mouth piece off the ice and just stuck it in his mouth. There's no question he'll Hockey have. Hockey players are tough. Yeah, tough. I'll see him. He'll probably have 102 fever on Tuesday. El Shami and Joe Olson going at it, and the ref very admirably yelling sticks down, sticks down as they started to go above shoulder height. Massaro is putting the body on Adam Anastos. Shot deflecting off the stick of Al Birmingham. Oh. Body's flying everywhere. All the way across oh, off the, the skate of the official <laughs> who will be credited with the assist should Chris Jenkins put it home. Out in front now a shot Deflected off the stick of Anastos to the end boards. Farragher has it now for the Hornets. He takes the hit and Sylvia pounds it off the boards. Offsides waved off and taking a big hit. He took two gloves in the face right in front of the official and the arm stayed down. 5.53 to go in the third period. The glove saved by Rulo. He holds on for the face off. like to take this stoppage to thank our cameraman for today's festivities. Is it Mike the Postman Simmons with yet another delivery to the viewers of Brock? Yeah, uh, not today. No. <laughs> the post office is closed. <laughs> is it Jay Miller? Uh, no. No. It is the prolific cinematographer Aaron Tebow bringing you a delivery in lieu of the postman. Very good effort by Mr. Tebow to brave the igloo today. Yeah, it's not too bad in here today. Honestly, this is probably the, the most comfortable I've been all season. My if feet only, aren't frozen. If only it could be 70 degrees outside all winter. <laughs> yeah, I need to move to Miami. Yeah, they got hockey in the desert. Why not? Five minutes left to go in the third period. And soon Las Vegas. In Vegas. The Golden Knights, or so they're called right now. I think that name changes before they start play. Four on one for the Hornets. A shot, glove saved by Stag on the rebound. It squirted across the crease. Able to recover, at least momentarily, were the Hornets. Jalen Bridges pressuring Cullen Anastasia. So what do you the think the, name, the new name of the Vegas team? The Gamblers? Blackjacks? I think it, I was hoping for something that, like that. Doesn't look like it's in the cards. Does it? <laughs> I think they'll be the Black Knights. I don't. The I don't. Army's not fond of. I don't quite get the symbolism. What that has to do with Vegas? It's more the owner. Okay. He uh, owns a hedge fund, Black Knight Financial. Three forty-five to go. I'm excited for that trip to Vegas when the Bruins go to town to face. Are you going to ask Jay if he can do coverage? Oh a, yeah. a special. Peter Sylvia with a shot. Helmet saved by Rulo, covering up the rebound. Three and a half to go. Special BCA presentation. Special BCA presentation. That I would be able to join you in the booth. If, that, if you need me. As long as they get I a think I can make arrangements. Table up there. 
I actually went to the new uh, Plain Ridge Casino with my parents on, um, oh, look out, oh, look out again. <laughs> Number nine, a couple of opportunities. Chris Jenkins, Stagnone with an initial save and the rebound went wide. Oh, but the new Plain Ridge Casino is much better than I anticipated. I really didn't know what to expect. Everybody said it was small, wasn't that good. Another goal for the Hornets, this one yet another fluke. That actually went nine, in. Chris Jenkins. Can we get that on replay? I didn't see the red light go on. The seven hole. What the heck? It deflected off of Stag a few times and then able to get it under his outstretched arm was Jenkins. The freshman's ninth goal of the year, second of the game. Assist to Austin Ricker and Matt Farragher. Five to nothing. I, didn't, I have to be honest, top. I didn't see this coming today. I really thought that they would match up pretty well. Come in with a little fire under them. Last game of the season here at home. And it just kind of... It's been anticlimactic from the, the first puck drop. Well, the MIAA playoff bracket comes out tomorrow for the Brockton Boxers. They enter with an entire five wins on the year. And we'll... Well, I was talking to one of the parents over there. They said there may even be a little bit of delay because I think there are a couple of play-in games for the Big 8, uh, for the Super 8. Really? Yeah. So that... Normally... So what happens normally is there's one play-in game that will happen Sunday night. Yeah. So if one of those teams doesn't get in, they, they become the number one seed. They do in automatically. Our automatically. Okay. But if there are two that of them, that happened with Severian a couple of years ago. And but I think they said they were going to have 12. This is, I mean, and I don't know if this is accurate or not. But one of the parents said there's going to be 12 teams that they're trying to put in, and two of them would have play-in games. Well, four teams would have a play-in game, if that makes sense. I could see that. The number of the Super 8. Because I think he even said Walpole is going to have to play to get in. They're, they're not, they're not a guarantee. The strength of schedule. But a number of the Super 8 teams are not from the South. Walpole and Severian, the two outliers. One and a half to go now in the Brockton Boxers regular season. A shot in Brockton's on the board. Anthony Paul backhanding it out of nowhere. And All right. Hey. Why not? <laughs> you got to start somewhere, right? That's it. Need to break the curse of the no goals. And it's been a while since they found the back of the net. The first goal in about six and a half periods of action for the Brockton Boxers. The first one since the second period against Natick. Frank at on the goal assisted by Peyton Sylvia. The Brockton's on the board five to one with a minute left in the third period. Shot zooming wide. Then Martin chipping it off the board. Zach Sylvia fighting for it. Sent out to the blue line, a oh. shot, and Stagnone lost it momentarily, making a shoulder save. Brian Corning with the Hornets' latest opportunity. Zach Sylvia breaking this one up, 30 seconds to go. And a takeaway by Patrick McCafferty, a shot loose in the slot. Now Corning around the boards, 15 seconds to go. Oh no, oh no. Yet another goal for the Hornets. This one pounded home by 
Jaden Menzer is second of the game. 8.9 to go. And so it goes on. And the beat goes on. Everybody's 0-0 in the playoffs. That's it. And Brockton just has to go in with the mindset of being the spoiler. I mean, one game at a time, and I'm sure they're going to have the number one seed. The goal by Patrick McCafferty, assisted by Jaden Menzer, 8.9 on the clock. The buzzer sounds, and the regular season has come to an end. Yeah, not the way that I think that Coach Cunningham and Coach Standy wanted it, but um, it is what it is, and time not to move the way on. Anyone wrote it up, but from your time up high above the ice here at AZ Afarina, talk about what you've seen from the Brockton boxes and what gives you hope for the MIAA South Sectional Tournament. Well, I'll tell you what I did see. is There was some flashes of brilliance when they came back and beat um, Norwood, and uh, they hung tough with Natick for the first few periods and just had a couple of mental mistakes. So if they can just kind of shake off these last two games, and they're going to have to do that real quick, forget about those two, and just come to practice on um, over the weekend and just get back to basics. And they need to just make sure that they don't make the, the unnecessary turnover in their own defensive zone and to be physical. I, they weren't very physical today again. They, they got out hustled, they got outplayed, and like I said, they have to have short-term memory as far as these last two games go. Well, Brockton putting up five wins on the air, four of those coming against big three divisional opponents. The one outlier was that game against the Norwood Mustangs. Brockton, by virtue of winning the big three division, have the automatic bid into the MIAA South Sectional Tournament. Brackets come out tomorrow. Reminder to check our Twitter feed for where the matchup will be, and we will have that game for you on Brockton Community Access. Mansfield Hornets getting the victory over the Brockton Boxers again by a score of 6-1 to one here at AZ Off on the final game of the regular season. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access, our cameraman Aaron Tebow, my hey, broadcast and thanks partner, a million for having me Mr. up here. Kevin this has been Carroll. a lot of fun. I appreciate you having me up here. We'll see you in the playoffs. All right.